So sculpting in Blender. I'm not gonna lie, I find sculpting in Blender to be actually quite enjoyable. Even though it's obviously missing a lot of features that ZBrush has, I actually find myself to be very comfortable within Blender when it comes to sculpting. I'll share what are the settings that I like to use over my sculpting brushes in Blender. Give me a crooked tool and I'll build you a crooked house, they say. So we really have to start by making sure that the brushes that we're going to use have been configured properly. So I'm gonna share what my settings are there. Now, of course, these are very personal settings. You may like to use different brushes in different ways, and you may want to tweak the settings on your own brushes completely differently than mine. And that's totally cool, but I'll show you what works for me and what helped me to sculpt that Emily Plant portrait. I'm a huge fan of the clay brushes in general. Almost all sculpting softwares have their own implementation of some of the clay brushes or clay-like functionalities, and Blender is no exception. So really the first thing I did when I started to sculpt within Blender, the first question I have even asked myself was, okay, so where's the clay brush? And that's how I came across this clay strips brush that is right here. And it's a wonderful brush to use. I use it all the time if you look at my sculpting demos within Blender. But the thing that really struck me about the clay strips brush though, the first time that I have used it, was the fact that it was actually very uneven. And you can see as I put a few brush strokes down on the surface here, you can see how it's very lumpy, it's very rough. We're just not getting a smooth stroke at all with the default settings that is on the brush there. So I've actually spent a whole night at some point just customizing the clay strips, trying to get the clay strips to be and to feel as good as I could. I've literally spent hours doing that. And I really like where I've winded up with that in the end. So there are a few things about a clay brush in general that is very important to me. The first is to have a stroke that is nice and smooth. So not to have that kind of lumpy, very rough, very artifacty kind of stroke like we have right now. If we zoom in there, you can really see what are all the individual samples. And the second thing that's very important to me when using a clay brush is to have the feeling that I have a wide range of elevation to the clay brush. Really feel as if there's a wide range to the intensity of the clay brush so that I can go in here and I can create some very soft strokes and I can also create very, very strong strokes that really displace the surface quite a lot. And I want to be able to do that without having to put so much pressure on the tablet or so little pressure on the tablet that I am losing control over my stroke. If you're just pressing really, really hard over the surface, then it actually becomes quite hard to control your brush. So it's very important for me that I am able to get a wide range of intensity on my clay brush while keeping the pressure that I put on the tablet within what I consider to be a normal range for me. So I'm kind of getting the soft strokes here. They're not too bad, but there's really not that much of a difference. See, as I'm putting a lot of pressure on the tablet, you can see there isn't that much difference in terms of displacement. So those are really two problems that we want to fix through tweaking the settings on our clay strips brush. By the way, one thing I actually like to do as well is to turn off the pressure influence on the size of the brush. I actually like to keep the size of my clay brush to be very consistent because if I want a bigger brush, I'm just gonna make my brush bigger. And if I want to have a smaller brush, I'm just gonna make the brush size smaller, of course. And I really only want the pressure that I put on the tablet to have an influence over the intensity of the stroke, but not necessarily on the size of it. And then to control the lumpiness here, there's a few settings that we can play with to really get a very nice, smooth stroke. The first one that I found that had a major influence on the lumpiness of the stroke was the normal radius that is here. You could consider this to be how big is the area under your brush that is sampled every time that you put down a particular sample to judge, okay, what is the amount of displacement? that the brush needs to put on the surface within Blender. So this normal radius being at the default value of 1.55, I find it really problematic and I get a much smoother stroke. If I bring this value down and I like here to keep it at around 0.9, I found that actually that worked really well for me. And you can already see the difference, right? You can already see how nice and clean my brush strokes have become just by varying this particular normal radius value that is right there. So our brush is a lot less lumpy, but we're still getting a lot of those little artifacts that you can see there. So to control that, we'll just go to stroke. And in here, we'll do a few things in here. 
The first thing we want to do in here is to simply increase the amount of samples on the brush so that every time that we do a stroke, there is more data that Blender collects to know where that and how that sample should be placed over the surface. So increasing the number of samples here will simply help us to have a smoother stroke. Now, if you increase this too high, let's say that I put this to the maximum of like 64, you'll see the kind of effect that we're going to get. We're going to get this extremely consistent stroke, but you can actually see that now I'm actually experiencing quite a lot of slowdowns here. But I found that keeping this around a value of eight or so gave me very, very good performance, but also was helping to clean out a lot of that lumpiness within my brush strokes. And you can see the result of actually doing that. If I zoom in on the stroke now, you can see that even though our stroke is a lot cleaner than it was, we still have a little bit of that kind of accordion feeling over the surface there or so. And the reason for that is simply because there's just too much space between all of the samples of the brush. And so we can control that with the spacing value that is right here. It's set to 5% by default. Let's just take that and let's just lower that here to 2%. And having that here at 2% will effectively reduce the distance between all of the samples of our brush. And look at that. We're getting this very nice, smooth, very buttery stroke. If we find that in general, that our clay strips is just a little too sharp, perhaps we want something that winds up being slightly softer around its extremities, we can increase the tip roundness here. But this is actually a value that I tend to tweak as I go, as I'm doing sculpting. Sometime I actually want to have a very harsh, a very hard brush. Sometimes I actually want to have a very soft brush. So I have a tendency to play around with this particular value as I sculpt here. But if you want a brush stroke that is just a little bit softer, then just increase this particular tip around this value that is right there. Once we have that nice buttery stroke, the next thing that we want to do is to adjust the strength of the brush and perhaps also the pressure curve on our tablet to make sure that we're getting very strong strokes when we're putting a good amount of pressure over our tablet and a very, very small amount of displacement of the surface when we are just gently running our cursor over the surface here. Now, I'm putting a minimal amount of pressure on the surface, and you can see that even then, I'm kind of getting something that isn't quite as shallow as I would want it to be. So I want to find the brush values and the pressure curve values that will really help me to have that very high range of displacement. So for the minimum pressure input, that's actually very easy because we can control the pressure curve to really get that where we want it to be. So let's tweak the maximum first. What I'm looking for is to put a lot of pressure over my tablet and just to judge if I'm getting a very, very nice amount of displacement on the surface. And this is actually pretty good. I have a feeling that maybe this is a little bit too much because the clay strips brush is an accumulation brush. As you can see, as we go back over the surface a few times, we are adding a lot of displacement to the surface. So I don't actually mind lowering this here a little bit, maybe put it at around 0 0.5. So you can see here as I do a few brush strokes here over the surface, we're getting a lot of displacement. And if I take a really, really big brush here and I just do little circles like these, I can actually displace the surface really, really, really far with only one brush stroke. I can create this uh, sort of herniating mass of polygons, as you can see here that's just growing out of the sphere, which is actually very useful if I want to, let's say, add a neck to a head. So our maximum strength feels pretty good. And so the last thing that we want to do is to simply make sure that as we are going over the surface in a very soft way with our cursor, that we are only adding a minimal, a very, very small, very imperceptible amount of displacement to the surface. And it actually turns out that because I've brought the strength here down to 0.5, I'm actually getting kind of satisfied with this. But I'm going to be straight with you. Just playing with the strength value really wasn't enough for me to really get that very high range of displacement the way that I'm describing it. I actually had to tweak a few other settings. I had to actually go with an edit within the preferences. So in here, let's simply go to input. And in there, where it says tablet here, I've actually played around with this here because by default, this particular value was set to automatic and the softness here was set to zero. And just with those actual settings, I really wasn't able. You can see here how I'm 
Like if I actually put just a very, very minimal amount of pressure over the surface, I'm still getting quite a lot of displacement there. So those default values here for the tablet really weren't working all that great for me. Depending on the tablet that you're using, maybe you may need to tweak these settings differently than mine. But what I have actually found was that I was getting a very nice range of displacement when I was setting the tablet API here from automatic to WinTab, and then also playing around with the softness value here. And I found that for me, a softness value of around minus 0.5 was actually giving me a very, very nice amount of range to the displacement of the surface there. In fact, we could even lower this even further and get even more of a range in here. You can see now with a value here of minus 0.75, if I gently brush over the surface, the strokes are almost imperceptible. So actually, that's not a bad value. So that's not actually a bad value. As I put a lot of pressure now, I'm getting a lot of displacement over the surface. And finally, if you're a Wacom user, you can also play around with the pressure curve within your Wacom settings, of course. So let's just launch here the Wacom Tablet Properties window. And in here, you can see that I've created a particular application preset for me for Blender. And in there, I can actually play with this tip feel value. If I find that I'm still not getting enough range, I can actually make the tip feel a little bit firmer. And a consequence of that will be the same as playing around with the softness value here within our Blender preferences. It's going to make it so that my very soft strokes will simply displace the surface even less. Once we tweak that, the best thing that we can do then is really just to have a go with these particular settings, see if we can get a very nice range of displacement over our surface. There you go. Look at that. Smooth as butter. It looks beautiful. So what I like to do then is to simply build volume with those clay brushes. And once I have a volume that is roughly the way that I want it, then afterward, I simply switch over to a polish brush, which in my case here is this uh, fill slash scrape brush. The thing that I've done here on the fill brush is that I have made sure that this particular checkbox here was turned on, first of all, invert to scrape, which makes it so that when we, when we hold down control, we are actually flattening the surface, as you can see. Whereas when we're not holding control, we are filling in the little cavities over the surface. So we are effectively polishing the surface without having to rely on any type of smoothing. But by default, I find that the radius, especially of the scrape functionality here, I just find it a little bit small, OK? You can kind of see how big the cursor is right now on screen. And yet when I hold Control to do a little bit of scraping here, you can see how narrow the stroke seems to be. So we can adjust that actually quite easily by simply playing around with the area radius here and increasing this particular value to somewhere around maybe around 0.8 or so. And then let's go to our scrape brush, which is the next one down here. And let's also make sure that our area radius is of the same value. And so if I go back here to my fill brush, now you can see that as I hold down control, I am actually scraping a bigger area of the brush. There's still something for me that isn't fully 100% there. And I have a bit of a hard time to put my finger on. But this is still really, really close. And I've successfully sculpted a few things in Blender already using these settings. But if I do tweak my settings on the fill brush in the future, and I think that it's relevant for me to mention that, I will go ahead and put that within a future YouTube video. So yeah, my mentality when it comes to sculpting, it's really just that. Add clay using the clay strips brush. And once you have added enough clay over the surface to represent the kind of volume that you're trying to sculpt, then simply switch over to a polish brush and then really just improve the quality of the surface until it looks exactly the way that you want it to be. And I have a tendency to always want to keep a little bit of imperfections over the surface. I don't like when a surface has been overly smoothed and it just looks like something that is just impossible in real life, especially when we talk about organic things. If we're talking about hard surface, of course, then that's a different story. But I really like on my organic sculpts to always keep a little bit of that imperfection, a little bit of those brush strokes that are visible there, as you can see, that are the result of using the clay brush. I like to keep a little bit of that because I find that it adds a lot of life to my sculptures. Even if I'm going to add, let's say, a bunch of skin pores on top of a head later on, 
and I want to make something that's going to be used within a portfolio setting, I still want to keep a little bit of that imperfection because I find that keeping a lot of that sketchiness over the surface starts to blend really well afterward with any type of tertiary details I could throw on top of there afterward. So that's why I don't have a tendency when I do sculpting to smooth the surface. I'll use a smooth brush here and there, just like everyone else. There are things that are just easier to do when you use the smooth brush. But in general, I try to avoid doing any type of smoothing and I really stay away from the smooth brush as much as I can because I just find the smooth brush just, it just, it destroys everything. Whereas if this isn't smooth enough for me somehow and I want to polish it further, using those polished brushes, make sure that I am reducing the intensity of some of the little artifacts that are over the surface. But everything that is there still stays relatively sharp. I'm preserving a lot more detail as I am polishing the surface than if I was to go over this with a big smooth brush. Hey there. Yeah, it's a different day, so I look a little bit different. I'm really happy to share my thoughts regarding Blender with all of you here on YouTube, but there's so much to say that I can't possibly fit all of it within these little capsules. I just want you to know that I've uploaded an hour-long discussion regarding Blender on my website, outgang.studio. We talk about the multi-res and at which resolution should you be at when it comes to sculpting different types of details. We talk about which stroke is the most appropriate to use when doing things like alpha stamping. And there's even a stroke by stroke narrated sculpting demo to really bring you into the mentality that I have when it comes to sculpting. And on top of that, I'm working on a 90 minute long, fully narrated time lapse of the Emily Blunt likeness sculpting demo that I have already posted here on YouTube. We talk about proportions, we talk about silhouette. We talk about how to read references effectively because there's a lot of misconceptions there. This 90 minute fully narrated time lapse will be posted on outgang.studio next Monday, which will be July 3rd, 2022. You can access all that and a lot more by becoming a member at outgang.studio for only $10 a month. I offer a seven day money back guarantee, no strings attached. So feel free to subscribe to the platform, binge watch all the content that you want during those seven days. And at the end of the seven days, if you're not fully satisfied, you can simply ask for your refund and I will grant it to you. So there's really no risk to you to give the Outgang membership a try. But my hope is that you will see how much value that you're getting on the platform for such a low price and that you decide to stay with us. I know that my content is some of the best that you will find anywhere. Our gang isn't a faceless corporation. It's an indie business that is fully dependent on the monthly contribution of viewers like you. My promise to you is that I will bring you some of the best character art educational content that you will find online for a very affordable price. And I wake up every day thinking about how can I make that a reality. To all current Our gang members, thank you so much for your support. It's because of you that I'm here right now. So go to outgang.studio and give the membership a try. There is literally zero risk for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.